Let's see if this works. Uh, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. Um, just gonna make sure audio is coming through on the video and then we'll get started. It's gonna be another uh, live session, this time on power management. So um, there are some interesting little power management things that you can do. Let's see if this works. All right, it's working. Um, there are some things in Zephyr that you can do to save some power. Uh, in some cases, there's not much you need to do, depending on uh, how the uh, drivers in Zephyr have been written for your particular device. So we'll talk about um, two ways of doing it. There's obviously um, at the driver level, which you don't really have a lot of control over unless you write the drivers themselves, uh, or you uh, can use the Zephyr power module, which we'll dive into in a second. And um, also there are some things that if your driver supports it, uh, you can use your overlay files for some power savings. So let's do this. Um, and if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe and like and leave a comment because it, uh, especially this particular uh, live session was actually um, some questions that I got on my community forum that uh, inspired me to do some kind of uh, Zephyr related power management stuff. So any questions or concerns, they can be turned into a live session. So and uh, yeah, really appreciate all the comments, questions, and everything that you guys don't have uh, done. And I really appreciate those who have uh, rejoined or joined consistently. Really appreciate it. So let's go. Uh, so we're main concern. Our main concern here is saving battery life, and um, a lot of that has to do with what type of peripherals you have running. Uh, for let's say the NF ninety one sixty, which has a GPS module um, and a LTE modem. Those are huge uh, in terms of power usage. So when you're not using them, you can turn them off. And while Zephyr has an affordance for that uh, in the code already, uh, there are certain peripherals like maybe uh, I2C or UART or things like that, that if you re leave it running, it's gonna use a lot of power. <clears throat> We're going to be focusing mainly on the UART module for the NRF9160 uh, as that one has some implementations that NORC did to kind of handle uh, power states and also um, turning off the receiver so that actually saves a lot of power, actually around 1 milliamp, um, which is huge for low power applications. Um, we'll also be talking about the overlay, um, like I mentioned before, and uh, also getting, uh, you know, with finer grain control, you can actually uh, turn uh, functionality on and off in your application um, with the power management uh, module. And we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, power management module. Um, some, in some cases, if the manufacturer has developed drivers for Zephyr, they might have already set in these kind of sane defaults. Like by default, the NRF9160, if you have it in kind of a active sleep mode, it's actually going to be, it's already in kind of a state where it's already kind of optimized. You don't really have to do much because everything's kind of happening underneath, under the hood. When you start adding uh, peripherals and started enabling GPIOs and things like that, that's where uh, things get a little crazy and you have to use a power, the power management module to make sure those peripherals are shut off or not being used um, at that time. So, um, but like I said, if it's not enough, we're going to use that power management module and we're also going to, we're going to use it to enable and disable peripherals. We'll also be talking about the overlay stuff, which also does it kind of more uh, permanently, where if you're not using it for your whole application, you can just shut it off completely. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Um, <clears throat> no, enabling the power management module is this. Yeah, easy peasy. Uh, one handy function, there's actually two functions um, that are most important for power management. Uh, one is the device set, uh, PM device set, state set, and then the get function. Um, obviously the get function is kind of less used because most of the time you know what the state of the device is, so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, you can check out the uh, kind of the code related to power management and Zephyr include PM. 
and uh, we'll be we'll be uh, focusing, like I mentioned, on uh, the UART uh, implementation from Nordic for the NR5160. I think it also counts for any of the other other NR5253, 50. I don't know about 51, but 52 and 53. Um, so here's a very, 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 very basic um, turning. Like if you're enable, if you have the, if you if you're using UART in your um, example and you want to kind of completely shut it off, not use it. <clears throat> here's um, a few basic commands that you can do. Uh, in in my case, I was actually using it as a, a way to power down the device in an, a custom AT command module. So I use Nordic's AT commands. They have some good uh, sample code slash code that they use for parsing AT commands and um, for their default examples, AT client and also the um, LTE link. I forgot the exact name of it, but it's like the it's like a the AT command um, AT client on steroids where they have a lot of like creating sockets to and creating MQTT client. It's more for like if you have an NRF 52 connected to an NRF 91 and you're just going over uh, with AT commands. So in this case, I'm um, just simply, it's been enabled somewhere else, initialized somewhere else. And what's happening is it's received a command to shut down. So uh, we're using the, we're in disabling uh, UART receive. And then there's a delay here. And actually on the forum, I was asked why. And I don't know why. <laughs> This is um, some code that was written by Nordic, so they probably had a good reason if they added that delay, and maybe it's just waiting for, maybe it's an asynchronous call, I'm not 100% sure, um, but they added that delay, and then you're actually going to set the uh, device state using pm underscore device state set. So, and there's a bunch of different device states, and we'll get into that in a second, but uh, this is the very basics of it, and you can enable or disable the, uh, the state of any particular device on the system as long as it's supported in the API. And if we if we go back to the if you go back in, to the driver um, the live session on drivers, there's this macro called device DT define, I believe, and one of the parameters is actually. A, a function pointer to the function, uh, the function that handles the power management stuff. So most of them don't implement it, but the ones that do, uh, you can take advantage of it using these uh, PM device set and get calls. <clears throat> so here's the uh, here's the get call that I was talking about before. It's just here to if you have an affordance in your in that driver that you can get that state, then you can use that call to get the state. Not all drivers, like the UR driver that we're looking at here does support it, so you can get that state back, but not all of them do. Um, you're just gonna get nothing back if uh, if you make, if you call it and your you know device driver does not support it. So uh, here are the device date uh, defined. We have a state active, low power, uh, force suspend, state off resuming suspending. And most of the time, I think I've put it between state active and state off. Um, I believe those are the ones that are supported in this particular driver. It's, it's all dependent on the driver, unfortunately. So it's not like universal where it's just like, this magically works. Um, you, so you'll, you will have to jump into the driver code most likely unless you have documentation from your, um, from your chip vendor that provides that information, so. Something to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just belabored the first point. I'm not gonna um, continue with that, but you get the idea. Uh, best to talk to them. So for Nordic, uh, if you have uh, power management related questions, you can check out their dev zone. Um, obviously, if anybody's using the NRF 9160 Feather, you can reach out on the community forum, um, community.jarrowolf.com, I believe. And um, when you're in doubt, check out the driver. Um, they're fairly, they're buried in a different directory structure and depending on if that driver is included in vanilla Zephyr, you can find it in that folder or if it's a module that gets imported 
uh, because you're using a West manifest um, into a different directory, then you're gonna have to search for it there. Um, just, just more fun, right? Um, so here's that uh, that uh, macro I was talking about before, the device DT define. And that third parameter is that function. Um, so if you're if it's not being used, it's gonna be null, but if it's it is used, then you're gonna be pointing to that um, PM control function wherever that is in the driver. Um, and in this case, they defined it in their dry in their driver code to be ur underscore nrfx nrfx underscore pm underscore control and then this act this guy actually splits up the code uh, into a depending on what the um, <clears throat> command is if it's a set then we're going to use the kind of other command there that your uh, your nrfx set power um, otherwise it's just going to be returning the the power management state so Uh, one thing about that um, function there is that's that's where all the magic is happening in terms of turning on a device or shutting down the device, and that's where it's it's supporting one of the enums that I just mentioned earlier: the power off, power on, any of the low power like intermediate uh, power states. Uh, in this case, I think it just supports, like I said, the power on and the power off. <clears throat> Uh, so that, I'm gonna wave my hand. That is pretty much covering the power management stuff. Um, and one thing that also is a for, can be afforded inside the inside your driver code, uh, if it's you know it's all dependent on driver support. So I know it works in this particular your driver because it's there, it's inside the code. But what else you can do is if it's supported in the driver. You can actually use your overlay definitions to control uh, which peripherals are on or off, or if they're defined, or if one has an uh, you know doesn't have an RX pin for UART, for example, and that's kind of like the main example here. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to be in this particular example, we're moving a um, the RX pin from the from the from the UART device, and what this does in this particular driver is, if it's not defined, it will not initialize the receiver, and the receiver happens to be the um, the the piece of the peripheral that actually draws the most current. Um, so in this case, removing that particular pin, saved in power. You can also for any uh, overlay device that you just don't want. You can also just undefine that particular um, device in the overlay. So if you have like your zero, I squared C2, any of these guys that you're just not using, uh, you can also remove them or, or un like undefine them. Or if you are not enabling, like if you're not enabling I squared C or UART or anything like that in your project configuration, they're not gonna get initialized either. So. It's kind of a, which one works better for you if you want to do it in your config or if you want to do it in the overlay. It's kind of up to you. And um, so here's the biggest thing here is that delete property. Uh, and we're just removing the RX pin. And that was one of the main suggestions that I saw in Nordic Dev Zone a while back. I was like, why is this thing drawing so much power? And it just happened to be that the receiver was just on always. And for the most part, I'm using this particular UART as a logging UART, so there's no bi-directional communication, so we don't have to have the receiver on. Now, on the back end, let me see how much. On the back end, that's where in the side of the driver it checks to see if that uh, particular node exists in that driver, and then it'll either turn on and use that pin or not. So here's an example. Um, you saw that uh, rx enable command earlier, uh, and uh, one thing it's doing here is just checking to make sure that the pin actually exists and that it was defined. And if it's not, then it'll return uh, it'll return for the function and say, "Hey, this is not supported." Um, using the error number there, uh, and it'll just go on its merry way. Um, so in this case, 
you can turn it off. So the, the difference here is if you're setting your overlay, uh, by default, your unin your, is uninitialized and there's not really a good way to turn it on. So if you're in an application where you're, you want it on, but you want to have control of when you want it on or off, you're probably going to want to leave it defined in your overlay and then you want to use those PM, um, the PM set command to actually turn it off and on as you need to. Um, and then obviously you need to uh, kind of like disable or enable the, the whatever peripheral you're using along with that so they play nice. Sometimes the, the, the power management functions, and I believe the one in your actually will kind of shut it down before, uh, before it actually kind of turns off the peripheral all the way and kind of deinitializes things. Um, Again, very platform and vendor specific, uh, and you just gotta you gotta play with it, and um, you gotta look at the code yourself. Don't be afraid to dive into the code because that's the most important part about kind of understanding some of these drivers. Um, and that's like documentation is great, but when it comes down to it, looking at the at the code and how they implemented things is really going to be the best way to kind of learn. And as long as it's commented, you got good comments, and you got a logical flow and you got some good header files. I always look for the header files because those usually have all like you know comments in there and like how does this how does this call work? Like what are the parameters? What's what does it return? How should I expect it to work? Um, just very uh, handy as always for for more engineering. So I can tell you what I tell you. Uh, or I tell you what I told you. Um, so we're we're you have two options here for any type of power management besides whatever is built in by the, the hardware vendor that you've, you've chosen. You get the power management module, which you can actively turn on and off the peripherals. Very handy, very handy but platform specific, vendor specific, needs to be implemented. Just remember. Or, and also very vendor specific in Zephyr, is also just using those overlays to just remove those entries from uh, from the code. Now, in some cases, if uh, like I mentioned before in the configs, if you're not initializing most of these these uh, peripherals, like if you're not uh, enabling C or UART or whatever, then most likely those drivers aren't going to initialize and they're going to be in their default state. Um, in many in many cases. For processors, the default state is kind of like a high Z, low power state. So um, you can't go wrong with that. It's just like if you know a particular driver is being initialized by default for your board or device, then you just got to turn it off or just don't add those entries into your project configuration. Um, and one thing that I do for, uh, for kind of de determining power is um, I have a pretty, uh, it's kind of an older Agilent um, Agilent uh, power supply here that can go down into kind of the nano amp range, um, nano amp, micro amp, and I'm just using that guy to kind of look at what the average current is and see when I'm making those changes, kind of what the the current the you know the current draw is. Then that's how I know I'm making improvements if I can see that number in a static state go down. It's like all right, I turn this off, good, just save 200 microamps. Turn this off. Turn the UART off, save, <laughs> save the milliamp. Um, so that's something you can do. I know other tools out there exist for um, like the, the PPK2 uh, from Nordic, the, the power profile kit. Um, I've heard that it's pretty handy. Um, there are other things out there. Uh, do I have a microcurrent out here? Um, one tool from Dave Jones, he, uh, he actually designed it, the microcurrent um, board which you can actually plug into a micro or a um, multimeter and then you can measure down to nano amps which is handy as well the only drawback is you need to set the range properly and then sometimes because you set the range higher it's basically creating a larger shunt resistance and that measurement sometimes messes with the devices so uh, but there's options out there and uh, this is just all part of the fun of kind of optimizing your projects to to um, kind of run low power as, as much as possible. So um, I will check out the comments here. Yes, Androby, you are right, my friend. Um, 
the serial LTE modem um, SLM uh, application was the one I was mentioning before. That's the one that was saying that it was the project, the um, application that's on steroids compared to the uh, AT client. Uh, that one you can use to kind of talk to from any type of host processor and start a MQT, uh, MQTT socket or there's a bunch of stuff there, download files, things like that. Um, and also, Franz, you, you said it too. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for piping in there, guys, because sometimes I'm like, what's the name of that thing? I look at this stuff all day, but what's the name of that thing? Um, and Mike, yes, yeah, the PPK2 is great, and I'm glad you, you found it useful. I don't have one, but uh, I'm gonna, I'll probably end up springing for one, because the more tools to put on my desk is like, why not, you know? Um, let's see, there aren't any other questions, but JF, Mike, Franz, and Droby, Mike, or uh, same Mike, uh, thanks for joining, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, and uh, I think that's it for now. But if you guys have any comments, questions, suggestions for the next video, please let me know. Leave a comment down below and uh, we'll be seeing you next week. All right, cool, thanks.